Hello friends, my name is Sue, the Digital Declutter Diva, and today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Outlook and in particular the inbox. There are many ways that you can view the inbox to actually make your day more efficient. Let's take a look at what those options are. Today we're going to look at a few things. We're going to look at the focused inbox, toggling the reading pane, toggling the folder pane, toggling the to-do bar, how you can modify the message preview or tighten up the spacing. We're going to talk about how to arrange the columns differently. We're going to talk about the ribbon layout, which is across the top of your screen, display settings at the bottom right, zoom at the bottom right, and then maximizing and minimizing your window, which is at the top right. And at the end, if you stay long enough, there is a bonus. I'm currently using Outlook 365. So your view may be slightly different. In a couple of minutes, I'll go ahead and show you what your view may look like at the top of your screen. This is the default that Microsoft has given me for Outlook 365. I'm currently in the inbox and on the left hand side of the screen I have a folder pane open. In the middle is my message list and again Microsoft's default is focused inbox and on the right hand side is a reading pane so I can see the message that is selected in the message list view. Also we have tabs at the top. We can call them menu or tabs under each menu tab is a list of commands. This is called the command ribbon and the bottom left we have what we call navigation options which allows you to toggle back and forth between the inbox, the calendar, tasks, people, and notes. Depending on the size of your monitor these commands will look a little bit different. I went ahead and took some screenshots of what that looks like for me. If I'm using my small laptop monitor and I'm on the view tab this is what I see. If I'm on my large monitor and I'm on the view tab, this is what I see. They look different, but just keep in mind everything is still there. So you notice, for example, current view, messages, focused, arrangement. Down here, current view, messages, focused, and arrangement. So it's exactly the same options for you. It just may look a little different. To change your view, navigate over to the menu called View. And then what I want you to do is I want you to go over to where it says Layout. And the first option here is Folder Pane. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we toggle between the folder pane. Now for those of you who have modified your view, hang in there. There may be at least one thing that you learned new that you just didn't realize. So folder pane is currently normal. Folder pane is actually here. Remember the, the uh, column on the left is the folder pane. I'm going to go ahead and minimize it. So watch what happens here. That's an option. And I can also turn it off and it completely disappears. So if that happens to you, just go here to folder pane, bring it back to normal. The other option that I have here is I can keep it open or shut and pin it and you'll see why I may want to do that as we move along. So again, with folder pane, you can normal, minimalize, turn it off. Folder The favorites are currently showing in the top left over here, but we won't be talking about that today. The next option that we have here is the reading pane. Microsoft defaults the reading pane to the right of the message. Personally, I don't use that view. I like to have my reading pane at the bottom. So all I did was take reading pane and click it and change it to the bottom. You can actually hover over this thin line separating the list from the preview. And then you can um, use your mouse to click, hold it down and drag it up and down if you need to actually have more of a message preview for you. The other option is we can actually turn it completely off and we don't have it on the right and we don't have it on the bottom. The next option we have here is the to do bar. The to-do bar will actually give you access to your calendar while you're in Outlook. See what that looks like. 
So my calendar will populate here to the right. I have nothing scheduled on this, um, this account that I'm using here. But if anything was scheduled today, they would be listed right here for you. And you can easily be in your inbox and at least manage what's going on in your day by seeing your calendar to the right. The other thing that we can do in the do bar to do bar is show people. So if I have contacts and I have people listed as favorites, let me go ahead and move over here. So if I have favorite people listed, that's really cool. If I want to contact them right away, I have that. You can also search people. And the last one is tasks. So let me turn off people. Let me turn on tasks. So tasks, I don't, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and turn off calendar. So if you just want to keep track of your tasks in the right hand side, while you are answering emails, responding to uh, messages and um, any reports that you need to create, etc. Over here, it's telling you what is due. So that is the to do bar. We can turn that on and we can turn it off as needed. Microsoft is using an algorithm to uh, determine what emails are most important to you. And they put those in your focused inbox and everything else goes into other. But personally, I don't need them to tell me what's important to me and what's not. So I actually turn it off. That's available to you under the view button. I'm going to turn off the focused inbox because I want all of my emails here. Now we can actually sort emails in a variety of ways. So right now it's just by date and time. So the most recent email is showing at the top for me here. But you have two ways to modify this. You can either go to the right hand side and select this drop down and choose maybe I want to organize it by whoever sent it to me so I can do from. I can also do a flag status so if I mark some things as important they're going to come to the top. Uh, if I want to you know manage it by the subject I can do it by the subject so there's plenty of options here and I encourage you to play around. I'm going to go ahead back to the date. All right. And here you could do it the same way. So here I can toggle back and forth between the most recent and the oldest. So we see that. And then from, again, we can alphabetize it from here. And subject we can do from here. And size we can also do from the column header. So you can either go here to the drop down menu and choose, which you have a few more options there as well. Or you can click on the top of the column and have it sort for you that way. All right. The next thing we're going to look at is adding and removing columns. Now, right now I have received from subject size mention and categories. Some of you may not use categories or some of you may. For me, let's go ahead and remove categories. So I want you to hover over top of the column header, right click, we are going to remove this column. So it's gone. Let's go ahead and say, you know what? I made a mistake. I'd like to bring categories back. How do I do that? So I'm going to hover over this column header area, right click field chooser. I found categories. I'm going to click on it and I am going to press down and drag it to where I want it to be. Let's say I changed my mind and I really don't want it here. I can actually press down and drag it and I can move it here. Okay. There's another option I would like to draw your attention to called the message preview. Now watch what happens to these messages in my inbox when I make the change. So again, it's under the view tab, message preview off one line, two and three. Let's go ahead and make three lines. It's going to give you a pop-up message. I recommend only changing it in your current folder. So now I can see a preview of the message from whomever sent it. Now I see less messages, but I do at least get a glimpse of what's going on. I can make it one line, two line, or three line, and you'll see how that changes. I can also take and make this a little bit tighter. So let me go back to off. All right, now you'll see how many messages I have here. I have all the way to the Microsoft Viva one on 12.6. What's going to happen is I'm going to see a little bit more if I use tighter spacing. 
All right, so the Microsoft Viva was here on the 6th, and now you can see one, two, three, four more messages. So you can just toggle that on and off. The next thing we're going to talk about is the command ribbon. Remember I said it was underneath of the menu tabs. So the command ribbon does take up quite a bit of space on your screen. And if you actually need access to all those commands, by all means, leave them all showing. However, you can actually minimize it kind of like two different levels. You can make it a little bit smaller and then you can make it completely disappear. Depending on which product you are using, it will look a little bit different. So for me, I am using Outlook 365 and my options are going to look like this, which I'll demo in just a moment. If you are using Office 2010 to Office 2016, at the far right and top of your screen, I want you to look for this square with an arrow pointing up. And that is your little ribbon, um, like toggle button that you're going to use to hide everything, just show the menu headers or tab headers, or show everything. All right, so those are the options that you have. Let's take a look at least in um, Outlook 365 at what that might look like. When you're using Microsoft Office products, you can actually take the following step in most of those products. So as we see here, I have the command bar showing, which they call the ribbon. The entire ribbon is showing with all the commands. We're going to actually make this a little smaller. Remember, I'm in Outlook 365. So over here is my drop down arrow for you. It's at the top. It's a box with an arrow pointing up. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and click this down arrow option. I'm going to switch to the simplified ribbon. Everything is actually still here, but it has to be selected from the drop down next to the image. We can also take and completely remove it by using full screen mode. So here I have more real estate to work with. If I want to take it back to where it was, I'm going to click those three dots. I'm going to find my down arrow and I am going to take it back to always show ribbon. All right, so remember in the other product, it is a square up here and you can auto hide the entire ribbon. You can just show the tab headers or you can show all of the commands. The next thing we're going to look at is at the bottom right of your screen. I know it's a little hard to see on mine because the words are small, but you'll see display settings. To the right of that, you have two buttons. One is going to let you see the normal view, which is what we're looking at now. And the next one is reading view. So let's see what that difference looks like. So basically reading view hid that folder pane over here and you can toggle back and forth. One more thing that you can do with this folder pane is see where this arrow is to minimize the folder pane. I can minimize it. Now I can see more of what's going on here in my inbox. If I want to bring it back, remember I mentioned that word pin before. If I want to bring it back, I'm going to click the arrow to open it back up, but then I must pin it so that it stays. At the bottom right, you'll notice there is a zoom function. It is currently set at the standard 100%, but you can click anywhere along this bar to actually make everything appear larger, become more unfocused, or smaller. And the last thing I want to share with you today, almost the last thing before the bonus, is at the top right, you will notice here that you have a couple of buttons. If you click this one, it is going to minimize the entire window and take it down, which is great. If you're working on something private and someone walks in the room, you can actually minimize the screen and they cannot see what you're doing. You do not have to worry about closing whatever the program is, just minimize it. And then once you're ready, you can open it back up by clicking it on in your taskbar. Now here is a button that allows me to adjust the screen size. It's called restore down. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and you'll see the presentation that I have for you is in the background and I can actually move it around. I can make it larger and smaller like this. And every time that I use that function, it's going to go to that size. 
All right. And of course, finally, we can exit out right here. All right. You ready for the bonus? The bonus is you have navigation options at the bottom left that allows you to switch back and forth between your inbox, your calendar, your tasks, your contacts, and your notes. So right here is the, are the navigation buttons. You can, right now I'm in my inbox. If I click on the calendar, it's going to open up the calendar. And if I click on tasks, it's going to open up the tasks. If you want two of these open at once and you are lucky enough to have more than one monitor, um, a great trick is to actually right click and you're going to open it in a new window. And so you can drag that window to another screen, keep your calendar open while you have your inbox open. The other thing that you can do is dock the peak, which actually makes it go to the right hand side, which we showed you earlier. If you minimize the folder pane, your navigation icons are going to move slightly. So keep your eyes here. I'm going to minimize this and you'll see that they go up the left hand side. And once you expand that open again, they'll go back to their normal position. One last thing I want to show you is you see these three dots. Let's go ahead and click those. Go to navigation options and you can actually switch back and forth between the words or the icons. Right now I have the icons showing, but let's remove that compact navigation and click OK and see what happens. Now it's the words. So whichever works for you, you can set the compact navigation to just show the images or you can actually look at the words. Friends, it has been my pleasure sharing these tools and techniques with you today. Keep learning, keep growing, never give up. Always learn something new and it will help you in your day-to-day -day life, in your day-to-day -day work, make you more efficient, help you reduce some stress just by learning a new technique. If you need me, you know where to find me. And if you want to see more videos, just go ahead and subscribe. And please take a look around and see what else is available. If there is something else you would like to learn, go ahead and drop me a comment. I'll see you in the next video.